Welcome to the Kalispell Warhawks Dynasty, everybody. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and year six in the series is about to begin. I mentioned like a week and a half ago that I wanted to do an additional practice stream and talk more about the team. Well, I had a number of internet issues last week, and I'm turning it into a video instead. I went to Twitter to ask for questions that you had about the team going into this year. So this episode is kind of like a little Q&A about the team and where we're headed into year six. There were a lot of good questions here that I'll be answering during the practice gameplay, but a couple minutes of just setup here. I did make one redshirt change going into the season, and that is to redshirt Boogie Turner. Some of you suggested it, and after thinking about it a little more, it makes sense. His awareness could use some work, and none of his skills right now stand out as major strengths to be a day one starter. So I think that extra year of eligibility will be big, while we have Nate Graham and Brandon Leak start at defensive tackle instead. I was also asked about Mario Townsend and why he isn't going to play. I think Titus Graves is a really similar player, and if you look at their ratings, they are all kind of close to each other. We have six active linebackers going into year six. Most of them we've never seen play outside of practice, but I didn't feel like any freshmen besides Wesley Merrill were ready to play in year one. I have edited a few appearances and numbers for the team. Not all players are going to see this year. Going into his senior season, we finally give Corey Miller some gloves. So he's going to have a new look. And then Blackjack let me know that after every year, the game resets socks for some reason. So I've gone through to edit some of those. I knew something was off. And also Glenn Hayes has a brand new look. I have taken care of formation subs, but you're not going to see them in the practice because they were causing my PlayStation to crash, so I had to reset them and then change them back after I finished up the gameplay here. But I do have Ja'Cory Day now in a couple Wildcat packages. He is going to be the second receiver in two receiver sets and the slot receiver with three and four receiver sets. Defensively, you have our base defensive line with Merritt and Elgin McCormick at end. But once we go to our other nickel packages, that's where you're going to see Damian Whitmore, Chris Harrison, and Marion Triplett rotate in. Also, I really like the 3-3-5 looks, and we're going to have, instead of Kelly John Charles being that line of scrimmage hybrid player, that's going to be Glenn Hayes this year. We now transition to practice, and you're going to see the starters for most of this, although I did bring in some of the backups I wanted to get another look at. So, starting to answer some of these questions now. We're going to start with this one. What players or what position groups need to have biggest impact this season for Kalispell to take the next step as a team? And I think the easiest way to answer that question is to just point out the offensive line and how they were a liability last year. You can see Roscoe Sheridan's average just completely bottom out. He went from 5.6 a carry as a sophomore to just 4.5 as a junior. I'm glad that wasn't his last year. That would have not been the way I wanted Roscoe to end his time. Defensively, I want to point out the secondary because there are new starters at nickel cornerback, one of the outside cornerback spots, and at free safety. I want to see us make more plays this year and force more turnovers, and I think we have the right players there to start doing that. Shannon Evans in the extended practice during the offseason looked really good, although not much for the defense looked good in this first practice segment. The offense completely dominated this. But also, I think James Hampton has the chance to break out. I redshirted him last year, although I thought he could have played. I just think that now we're going to have an even better player for two years of eligibility. Then you talk about Glenn Hayes, who's going to play nickel. He's an extremely good athlete, and he'll be given many opportunities to make plays this year. Speaking of defense, another question. What's the defense going to look like this year? Scheme, personnel, aggressive, or passive? Well, the scheme hasn't changed. A lot of the personnel has. I'm a little concerned right now that the inexperience at linebacker and just the fact that none of those players are like blue chip talents. There isn't anybody that I think is similar to a TJ Strong or even a Malcolm Neal, let alone Marcus Calhoun from the early years in the series. I'm wondering if we have to scheme around those linebackers a little bit to maybe get a little more aggressive and 
I hope that we have the corners that allow us to do that first off. Last year, I felt like blitzing kind of left our secondary in bad situations. We weren't as aggressive as I like to be, but hopefully this year that opens up. With us returning our pass rushers, and in my opinion having the chance to have a much better secondary, I think we can be a lot more creative this year. Next question, who do you think has the best chance at breaking out or having a surprise year? I mentioned James Hampton a lot during the offseason. Hampton is one of the best athletes on the team at 6'2", 180 pounds, and key ratings like 95 speed, 81 man coverage, 88 zone. He's not a great press corner, but I'm hoping that he at least can shadow receivers and man coverage and give us a chance to pick off some more passes. He was really good in all the practices we've seen at defending the deep ball, so I have a lot of confidence in him. I also want to mention pass rusher Damian Whitmore, who's going to get more chances to play this year. There were also questions about if I'm rotating the D-line a bit more, and I've already set that up in formation subs so that it does happen, and it's a lot easier to get those players in and out. You'll also see that I added some new stuff to the playbook this year, which I like to do every season when I think certain formations aren't working or I want to get some different looks. So I got to practice a lot of that today. But with Damian Whitmore, he has 93 finesse moves, which is just incredible. The best pass rush skill on the team. It's just a matter of if he can be productive in the snaps that he gets. And obviously, the more productive he is, the more chances he has to play. On offense, I think there's a chance for a lot of players to have better seasons. And I want to point out JR Battle, actually. I thought he was good in his first year as a starter, but I think that the situation around him is a lot better with all five offensive linemen returning. And just watching him throw in the practice, he hardly missed a throw. When he finally did, I realized that he wasn't off the mark very often. So I think JR Battle could have a big season. And if he has a big year, perhaps that means Ja'Cory Day finally has the monster season that we've all wanted him to have. He's been a dynamic playmaker for three years with Kalispell. His career high in receiving yards is 733, which was set last year. I think he needs a bit more volume this year because 49 catches, which was his career high set in his junior season, only averages out if you play a bowl game that's less than four catches per game, and I don't think that's enough for his ability. On to the next question, what are the strongest position groups on each side of the ball? I think on offense it's a toss up between the running backs and the receivers. Obviously you need more receivers and we have a lot of players at that position that can do different things for us. So to have a possession guy like Amante Jones and then a dynamic deep threat like Ja'Cory Day is a pretty big deal. And if we had one of the receivers get hurt, I think we'd rebound a lot easier than if one of the top two running backs were to get injured. If you look at defense, that could be the secondary this year. But for now, I'm going to say the defensive line because they have a bit more experience and we've seen them play at a really high level. There were times last year where they were wreaking havoc game in and game out for opposing quarterbacks, but when they were silent, that was when the defense really fell apart. But I think having Jared Merritt, Elgin McCormick, and then a couple junior defensive tackles in Graham and Leak, that's a pretty good foundation right there. And then you consider we have like Bobby Hill and Chris Harrison, Damian Whitmore, and Mario Triple that can come off the bench. I feel like there's a lot of potential there. Another question, why aren't you aggressive in finding good recruits? We've tried being aggressive in the past and we're definitely too early in being able to do that. We lost a lot of battles and had a couple down recruiting classes before this last year. I think this season we can maybe get away with a little more aggressiveness, but also I find it to be a little bit easier to find those underrated players that you have less competition for. I don't want to have to recruit against Alabama or in the Pacific Northwest like in Oregon. I would rather try to find the three stars that are really fours. I will look more this year than I have in the past at the fives and other four star prospects, but I think that we have to still have a foundation around a lot of three stars until we can get into that next tier. Here's another question, how do you plan to use Hayden John Charles? I think Hayden can be very good and has a lot of potential. I'm not sure how good he's going to be as a true freshman. 
We saw a lot of good things in the practice, and he caught the ball better in traffic than I expected. I don't expect him to make a lot of flashy plays for us. I think he'll be used a lot in the red zone. He's not a dynamic athlete, so moving him into the slot like Donny Castillo isn't as much of an option. I think he'll just be a guy who's used to move the chains on third down and to make tough catches. And the tight end situation brings us to another good question about which offensive personnel do you think you'll run and how often. I'm a big fan of 3 by one sets, meaning three receivers, one tight end, one running back. And that's where I think our bread and butter is and has been. With a couple more tight ends on the roster this year, I do think we can run more two tight end sets. I did not like running them last year because Oscar Williams was not a great run blocker. I did not redshirt Reggie Jackson because I think we might need all three tight ends. And Jackson is a better blocker while Oscar Williams is a better receiver and obviously has the best spin move on the team. If I feel like we need some kind of a boost in the running game with an extra blocker, we have the option of Bo Lee at fullback, who has a 70 run blocking rating. We have a couple eye formations and strong eye formations that we can use, and I think that we should at least consider it. At this point in the practice, I switched over to Justin Colbert, who really stole the show during practice. He's a redshirt freshman who showed a lot of arm talent. And the next question I want to talk about is, what are your plans if Battle gets injured? What Colbert has done during the practice has launched him to the second place on the quarterback depth chart. If JR Battle gets hurt, Justin Colbert is going to play. I believe he can let us keep the same scheme. He's been very accurate, and he's got an incredible deep ball. Maybe better than JR's from what I've seen. And if you look at the ratings and compare him to other senior quarterback, Brett Mitchell, Colbert has 87 throw power, Mitchell has 82. Colbert has 85 accuracy, Mitchell has 82. And Colbert can make throws like this. He did that routinely in the first practice that I did. And here is even more of it as he finds Lamar Williams downfield. I like this style of offense that we've been running, although the option style offense with Marquise Walker was effective at times. And that takes us to our next question. Will you ever transition back to more of a mobile quarterback oriented West Coast style offense? It seemed to hide some of that poor O-line play when Walker could scramble. I think it's possible and I'm always open to a scheme change, which is why it changed in the first place. And my philosophy is that I'm always going to have a scheme that takes advantage of the best players on our team. I don't just want to try hiding weaknesses. But typically I am going to look at who the best quarterback is and then how is he getting the football around? Are we going to have a chance to go deep or do we not have receivers that can do that? I will say that there could be some changes going into next year even if Colbert were to become the starter which is the most likely situation right now especially with how he's played. But I do have a lot of concern about the receiving core next year and if they can do the same things that these receivers are able to do. There is no Ja'Cory Day type of player that's being redshirted right now or is just low on the depth chart. He's one of a kind. And while I like Colbert making throws like this, if we don't have receivers down there to get open, they're not going to happen. So it's hard to say right now what exactly the scheme is going to be in the future, but I know receiver is going to be a top priority in recruiting. And having Freddie Kimbrough, the only five-star recruit in Kalispell history, to transfer was a big shock. And that was not a position we wanted one of our best recruits to transfer from. So going into next year, it looks like our top receivers would be Amante Jones, Mike Harris, who I think is actually really intriguing, and then Jermaine Finley as well as current red shirt freshman Justin Payne. As of right now, none of those players have speed in the 90s, and they're pretty much all possession receivers. Your two speed receivers on the team right now are Lamar Williams and Ja'Cory Day, and they are of course both seniors, as is Justin McClellan. So a lot of change is coming to next year's skill positions with all those receivers graduating, as well as Corey Miller and Roscoe Sheridan, and not to mention J.R. Battle. I was asked about how many snaps Ja'Cory Day is going to get on defense. Hopefully that is not required, but I guess if he gets out there, we know that he's capable of making interceptions. How soon are you planning a conference switch for Kalispell? 
Right now, I'm not really thinking about it because the conference is really competitive. We've only made it to one championship game and we obviously won it a couple of years ago. But I don't think that we're anywhere near that, especially with all the transition and the fact that we don't have these like five-star recruits just waiting to take up starting spots down the road. One reason why I schedule that Pac-12 game every year is because that's potential competition if we can get to that level. And we're just not there yet, and I don't think that we're going to be there next year, or even the year after. But I will say, the Mountain West Conference has been one of the biggest surprises from this series because the games have been more fun and more competitive than I thought they would be. So I'm not worried about Pac-12 football right now. Here's an interesting question. Who do I think will be the first Kalispell draft pick? I think there's a really good chance this year with JR Battle and Roscoe Sheridan being the highest rated players on the team. I think those are the two players that could be drafted. If I had to guess who would be taken earlier, I'll just say JR Battle because he plays quarterback and Roscoe plays running back. But I think they both have a chance this year to actually get drafted. What are your thoughts on the state of the secondary and what will you be doing to improve it moving forward? I think the secondary can be really good this year and even next year, but I think that I need to do a better job of getting depth at corner and we're pretty thin at safety right now. I haven't done a whole lot at that position in a while. Do you plan to use Day at quarterback if Battle gets hurt? Obviously, Ja'Cory Day has a little throwing ability, and we saw that on display in the offseason practice. I think it'd take a lot to go wrong for Ja'Cory Day to take snaps at quarterback, but I do have the Wildcat package so that there might be a chance for him to throw a pass or just to try something different if we're struggling against a particular defense. I was asked if we'll play Minnesota when Sidney John Charles is their starting quarterback, and that will absolutely happen. This year we are playing Jesse Heikinen for UCLA, and I like keeping track of those high-profile prospects and when we can potentially play against them. That's a really fun part of this series. And we're just getting to the point where we can start really capitalizing on those stories, so to say. We've done it before with Brock Oxendine, but we're going to see Jesse Heikinen this year, and I can't wait for that game. I'm going to do one more question here. What is the overall goal for the team this year? The goal for the Warhawks in year six is to win a conference championship. We have a lot of veterans on offense, and we've been building this core for a number of seasons. This is one of the years I expect to be one of the most successful for us, and I know after this year we're going to have some real challenges keeping the team at a high level just based on the offensive turnover we're going to have. We have five seniors this year starting on offense and just three on defense, but those five on offense are a quarterback, three skill players, and then our starting right tackle. Not to mention some role players as well like Lamar Williams and Corey Miller who are also seniors. So year six is coming up next for the Kalispell Warhawks. I will be recording that very soon. I have the recruits to put into the game, and we'll be on to week one against the Rice Owls this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it was a fun one to put together, and I like answering your questions about the team, and that's part of why the streams are fun. So I hope that this answers a lot of your questions and that you are excited for year six. Please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.